For thousands of years, bats have been reviled and feared. They're also known to carry untold numbers of viruses, many of which make the jump to humans, including here in Australia. It's been known for years that they have pandemic potential. The Wuhan Institute of Virology is a leading centre for coronavirus research. Scientists there have published papers on engineered coronaviruses showing how dangerous they could be. But there have been concerns about how secure the Wuhan labs are, which has created fertile ground for allegations and even conspiracy theories. The outbreak may have begun, not in a public meat market, but leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Where an animal may have infected a researcher who'd been working on bat viruses. And the virus quickly spread from there. China has a history of infecting the world, and they have a history of running substandard laboratories. Could a virus have accidentally spilled out from the lab? No one can rule that out, but the odds are vanishingly slim. When you think about all the exposures that humans have to bats uh, in the wild, uh, there are just millions, and I would even argue almost billions of times more uh, chances that a human would get exposed to a uh, coronavirus in the wild than, you know, than uh, trying to pin it on that one lab and that one scientist. Scientists who have studied the virus's genome also conclude it's extremely unlikely it was deliberately engineered in a lab. They estimate that the SARS-CoV-2 virus is the result of 50 years of natural evolution and far more effective than anything a scientist could have cooked up. It is a pretty good virus. It um, is very good at what it's doing. It's spreading from human to human uh, very effectively. And I will tell you, I've known a lot of you know, really smart virologists. Nobody knows enough virology or about how viruses become pathogenic to have engineered this virus. This is very clearly a product of nature. The likely course of events is that a human got infected from bats, either directly or via another animal host, maybe years ago with an ancestor of SARS-CoV-2, or more probably last year with the virus itself. And then, it started to spread. But some researchers are playing down the idea that the notorious Wuhan wet market is the source of the original outbreak. About two thirds of the original um, COVID-19 cases that were described in Wuhan are uh, linked to that wet market. But then another third of them are. It may not have been the actual origin of the virus, but some early person that was infected may have come to that market and started a chain of transmission. Francois Ballou is the director of the UCL Genetics Institute in London. His lab recently published a paper which found that the virus likely emerged in late 2019, not too long before the first cases of COVID-19 were identified, and probably jumped from animals to humans around that time which, if you put aside the damage caused by the pandemic, is not at all unusual. These things happen actually quite, quite often. They rarely lead to pandemics. Another area of controversy is whether the COVID-19 virus is mutating into different strains which behave in more dangerous ways. Francois Ballou's team looked at viral genomes from over 7,500 infected people and found nearly 200 mutations. But as scary as that sounds, there's no reason to panic. There's no evidence at all, actually, that any of them affects transmission or virulence. Now, this may change, but I think it's a bit early to, to make these claims. Genetic mutations occur normally as the virus passes from person to person and reproduces itself. But these mutations don't necessarily change how the virus behaves. Although you might have seen non-peer-reviewed studies suggesting a new, more contagious strain has emerged in the United States and even in Australia. There's really no evidence for that, for this at all. There's really only one strain of SARS-CoV-2. Um, and, you know, in terms of whether it's becoming a bit more transmissible, um, I'm skeptical of that. Uh, there's a lot more work that needs to be done to uh, prove that hypothesis. Given that this novel coronavirus is mutating steadily, does it mean that SARS-CoV-2 will defeat the search for an effective vaccine by constantly changing its spots? The good news is that SARS-CoV-2 is much more stable than influenza, but that only makes the search for a vaccine just a little easier. 
there are over 100 vaccines in development currently. The kind of average success of a vaccine generally is about 6%, so we have a good chance that some of them will work. For how long they will work, that's another question. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.